Hey, welcome back everybody. This lesson is going to cover adding linear expressions, 7.ee.1. Now the first thing that you might want to do is understand what makes a linear expression. So if we look at this table right here, uh, we've got one row that represents linear expressions, and we have another row that represents nonlinear expressions. What do you notice about these values, these terms, that might distinguish them from these terms. What do you think? Do you notice anything about those that makes them different? Now this is negative 4x and this is x squared. Is it because it doesn't have a coefficient in front of it? Is that why? This is negative 3x plus 5 and then this one right here is negative, negative 7x cubed plus x. Now what's a little bit different? It maybe it has something to do with that. What is that called right there? And then look at this next one right here. Notice again, this is a linear expression, and this one is not a linear expression. Now again, look, that has x to the fifth in it. Now if there isn't an exponent listed, if there's not one shown, like I was saying in a previous lesson, there's invisible ones in a lot of places in math, and this is one of those other places where one can be. And when there's no exponent, you can by default put an exponent of one there. So that's negative 4x to the first power. Same thing with this one right here. You could put a 1 right there. You can put a 1 right there as well. Now notice these don't have exponents of 1. That is x to the fifth. This is x cubed. Right here, this is x squared. So maybe you figured it out by now. So a linear expression is an algebraic expression in which the exponent of the variable term is equal to 1. If you have any other power, then you're talking about something that is not linear. It might be quadratic, it might be parabolic, hyperbolic. It could be a lot of different things, but it's not linear. Now linear means that when you graph it, for instance, if you were to graph it on a, on a coordinate plane, you're going to get a line, hence the name linear. You know, it doesn't have to be perfectly horizontal, it just has to be straight. That's all linear means. It has to be something that forms a line or a line segment. Now in this part of the lesson, I'm going to discuss some of the strategies that you could use for adding linear expressions. Now, the first method that I'm going to talk about is this thing called the vertical method. Now, the vertical method is where you take the like terms and they are stacked one on top of the other. So they're stacked on top of each other and then simplified which just means we've added it or broken it down to as few terms as possible. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we've got x and we have plus, I'm going to write plus negative 2, just so that we identify negative, that minus 2 is negative 2. And then I'm going to stack that on top of 3x, because those are like terms. Now those, I've stacked the x's on top of each other because those are the like x terms. And then we're going to do 3x plus 8. So that's what you're going to do. And then if you add the x's, well of course if you want to put a, a coefficient in front of the x, you can always imagine there's a 1 there. And so then that makes 4x. And then the constants, when you put together negative 2 and 8, you get 6. And then there is your, there's your expression that is in simplest form because we can't go any further with it. I know a lot of times when you do these problems, it seems like there's more work to do. It looks like another math problem, which it is, essentially. 4x plus 6 can be turned into an equation, you know, if we make it equal to something, or if we know what x is equal to, we can evaluate it. But as of right now, we can't really do anything else with it other than just look at it and admire it because we got it right. Now the other strategy right here is called the horizontal method. And this is where you take the like terms. So the horizontal method is where the like terms are grouped together in a line and then you simplify it. You know, that's basically where you put all the like terms together as much as possible and you add it. We've got x plus 15, so I'm going to write x plus x. Now if you want to put parentheses around them, you can, I'm not going to. Then plus 15 plus negative 37. Now I know that says minus 37, but remember, subtraction also makes the 
number that it's in front of negative. It makes the value of it negative, so it's really negative 37. And now if we put the x's together, we can imagine those are just 1x and 1x. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. So you got 2x right there. And then you have 15 plus negative 37, which is negative 22. And that's it. That's as far as you need to go with that particular problem. Now, the previous examples that I showed you didn't really have much to it. It was just a matter of kind of putting together like terms and simplifying it down to as few parts as possible. Now, with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use the distribute property a little bit. Now, one phrase that I like to use is the phrase clear parentheses. Because clearing parentheses obviously gets rid of the parentheses, but it's a way of using the distributive property. If you think about order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Well, addition and subtraction are two of the last things you need to do. And if you have a factor that's in front of parentheses right here, well, that's going to involve multiplication, which is ahead of addition and subtraction, which means you have to do that. So we can't put together any like terms yet until we've multiplied things out. And to multiply things out, we have to clear parentheses. We're going to have to use distributive property. So we're going to distribute the 8. So we're going to do 8 times x. 8 times x is 8x. 8 times 12 is 96. So I'm going to write, instead of minus 96, I'm going to write plus negative 96. And then here, I'm going to distribute 3 into x and I'm going to distribute the 3 into 12. So 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times 12 is 36. Okay, now we have some like terms here. We can add x's with other x's. So 8x plus 3x makes 11x. And then we have constants that can be added to other constants. So you have negative 96 plus 36 which is negative 60. But I'm going to write, instead of writing minus 60, I'm going to write plus negative 60. I mean, it's perfectly fine, though, and it's not wrong. Don't get me wrong here. It's perfectly fine to write 11x minus 60 as well. Both those answers are great. But that's as far as we can go with those problems. There's nothing else we can do with them. Like I said before and one before that, it looks like we have more to do, but in reality, there isn't anything else we can do to those. Now, this last example looks pretty similar to the other one. The only difference is that sometimes you have to distribute to both the expressions like we did in this example. We had an 8 and we had a 3 that needed to be distributed. But in this particular one, there's nothing right here. I mean, you could, I guess you could say there is something there. We can say there's a 1 right there. You could distribute a 1 which is basically just using the identity property. When you multiply by 1, nothing changes. So really, the only thing that has to be distributed is the 2, which means you're going to clear parentheses on the right side of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the vertical method here. And I'm just going to write negative 5x plus negative 10. I know this says minus 10, but I'm going to write plus negative 10 just to kind of emphasize that the 10 is negative. And then we're going to distribute 2 into 5x. Now 2 times 5x makes 10x. And then 2 times 12 makes 24. Now using the vertical method right here, we've got everything stacked up nicely. We've got like terms that are over each other. So negative 5x and positive 10x, they're going to add up and make 5x. Actually subtract, right? They're going to they're going to be a difference. And then negative 10 plus 24 is, again, we're going to look at that as a difference, not as a sum. So negative 10 plus 24 is actually going to make 14. And then in terms of what we were doing, what our exercise was here, we are all through with this problem. We cannot do anything else with 5x plus 14. That is simplified down to simplest form. Okay, everybody, that does it for this particular lesson. Make sure you do the practice problems that accompany this lesson, and that should do it. Everyone, have a great day, and see you later.